Not gonna lie, I almost started filming without my shades. I'm literally that baked right now. Hey, what's going on there, guys? You've officially arrived at the 420 scene, and today we're gonna talk about growing in cold weather, but first, be sure to show us some love and support by watching the entire video, dropping a like, subscribing, and tapping the post notification bell so you miss out on any future videos, and also, check out our sponsors, Robert Gergman's ILGM and Mars Hydro for all your cannabis needs. So obviously, your plants absolutely love the warmer climates, the sunshine, but we we live in the real world here where it actually gets cold, especially if you're in the Northeast like me. Even if you're growing indoors, it still gets cold, but there are some things to look into when growing in colder temps. The first thing you wanna look at is getting the right genetics. That's literally the first thing that you should be looking at. You're gonna want strains with genetics linked to cooler areas. Autoflowers are great for growing in outdoor climates because as you know, what makes an autoflower an autoflower is the ruderalis cut. Ruderalis genes, I hope I even said that right. And they they originate from Central Eastern Europe and Russia, so you already know they're gonna be able to handle the colder temps. Plus, I mean, seed to harvest in as little as eight weeks, you can't go wrong, right? Now, it's good to know how cold weather affects your plants. Now, I got two major concerns. The first is shock to your plant's rooting system. Healthy roots are the heart and soul of your healthy plant. They're the most important part of your plant, and the cold weather can totally impact the health of your roots, so that sucks, right? Once the temps drop below 55 degrees, the metabolism starts to slow down. Now, when that happens, Happens, your plant is gonna have a hard time taking in water, nutrients, and oxygen from the soil. And eventually, when enough time passes, your plants are gonna start to wilt. Now that really sucks. <laughs> Now, depending on the strain, cold weather can actually cause your plants to herm, and that's like the worst thing that could happen. The second major concern is mold, especially if there's moisture in the air. Rainfall, snow, condensation, if that gets up in your flowers, the grow is done, and it's over. You can't get rid of that. Did I say it's over? Now, how cold is too cold, and what temps are good to maintain? I don't like my plants getting lower than 65 degrees, and I mean, even that's pushing it. I don't like my plants getting any lower than 65 degrees, and if you can keep them at the bare minimum temp of 65 degrees, Degrees, you'll be fine, but try to keep your temps closer to the 70 to 77 degree mark. Now, of course, it depends on the stage of their life. I was strictly referring to the flowering stage of their life. Now, vegging plants like it a little warmer, say 78 to 82 degrees. I have plants in the 84 to 86 degree range, but I mean, that's pushing it now. Indica strains do a lot better in the cold, and they're also more resistant to mold, so that's a win-win, right? And me personally, I just prefer indicas. It's a lot easier to control your grow when you're indoors, but cold temps still can happen. Even if you're inside, cold temperatures are still gonna happen, especially if you're like growing in a basement or something. Now, during the flowering stage, like I said before, I like my plants in colder temps around 65 to 68 degrees. I've noticed that the flowers change colors really nicely if you keep the temps lower. And of course, that also depends on the strain. I like having I like having those purple hues in the plants, you know what I mean? Now, if you're growing outdoors and it's getting too cold for them and you gotta bring them inside, that's of course, if you can bring them inside. Just be careful, try to ease them into growing indoors. I mean, if your plants were used to the 65 to 68 degrees, degree temps and all of a sudden their new environment is like 80 degrees, you know, that's a bit of a spike. So try to ease them into it if you can. If you have the option of growing inside of a greenhouse, that's also props to you. You can grow in a greenhouse all year round, but most of you guys have closets and tents. So I'm saying that greenhouses just would just be another option. On a side note, you guys all voted on what we should be growing for the next series. And we got some Skittles started up. The BK Autos didn't do great as far as producing big flowers, but we were using two gallon fabric pots. So this next time around, we're going to be in the the five to seven gallon containers that we're usually in. I just wanted to experiment and see what we would get out of it. But anyway, I hope these tips on growing in cold weather helped you out. I'm gonna close out this video, but show us some love and support by dropping a fat thumbs up, drop that fat like, and subscribe if you're not already subscribed. And I hope everybody has a great weekend and also wish everybody a happy new year. We'll see you back on Tuesday. And as always, stay safe. Peace.